I've never been all that big on multiplayer shooting games. I mean, I don't know why that is. I've just preferred my shooting games to be offline rather than online. However, one game that I lost countless hours to was the original Counter-Strike, even before it was known in version 1.6 and was standalone, when it was an actual mod for Half-Life. I'm gonna go plant the bomb. I'm with you. Now, I don't know if people can understand it nowadays, but playing it back then as a young Sunny Jim, it was actually a bit of a tense and suspenseful game. Like those moments when you were the last person left alive and could hear nearby footsteps as the enemy team was still moving around. Then you get those rare moments too when you'd be the last person left and plant the bomb or even defuse it and win the match for your deceased team members. It was a roller coaster of emotions, let me tell you. It was a game that took up a fair chunk of my teenage years, so when Condition Zero was announced in 2001 as being this bigger and better version of Counter-Strike, I was pretty damn excited. After numerous delays in the game going between multiple developers, mostly Rogue Entertainment, Turtle Rock Studios and Ritual Entertainment, before finally falling back into the hands of Valve, it was released in 2004. And it turned out to be a monumental piece of shit. It wasn't the first time Valve had blown smoke up her asses, and it sure as hell wouldn't be the last. Episodic content, anyone? Anyway, ignoring the fact that Doom 3 and Half-Life 2 were months away from being released, making Condition Zero even more redundant, it was in essence little more than a slight visual upgrade over the original. Textures and weapon models were slightly updated and improved, and certain maps had also been redone with more detail visually in terms of the modeling and architecture. The game's most original inclusion though is the offline mode against bots. Now this component of the game being developed by Turtle Rock Studios. Here you earn reputation points by playing through the maps on different difficulties and slowly building a team as you progress through a tour of duty. Pretty much all of this content was just the revamped maps from 1.6 like Dust, Italy, Aztec and so forth with the player taking on an increasingly challenging roster of bots, similar to the tiers in Quake 3. I mean, it wasn't groundbreaking in the slightest and it's probably the least amount of work they had to do to justify making people pay for it. However, this mode can actually take a bit of time to complete, and even on the normal difficulty mode, it's actually pretty challenging. I'm not sure what exactly the difficulty modifies though, I mean, as far as I could tell, it just means the bot's more accurate, their pathfinding and overall navigation seems to still be the same. If you're hoping you can use this mode to train for online play though, well, then you're sadly mistaken. Because playing with bots and then playing online is an entirely different kettle of fish. About all that playing offline is going to do is help you get used to the handling of weapons, but more importantly, the layouts of the maps, which makes you more aware of the vantage points you can attack other players from, and vice versa for them. And that's also why it's so hard to review Counter-Strike in the conventional sense. I mean, you can talk about the mechanics and the weapons and the maps and all that, but none of it's outright bad or all that worthy of criticism. And the game itself is dependent on the type of experience you have personally when playing online. What I can at least review or at least focus on a bit more are the deleted scenes. This was created originally by Ritual Entertainment and it comprised of 12 single player missions taking place in different locations around the world, as you took on various terrorist factions using the weapons and equipment available in the online component. It's said that this thing was a complete mess before launch and so the game was put back into development and handed over to Turtle Rock Studios who I guess kept the damn thing on life support and finished it all off for its final release. Turtle Rock Studios of course being the developers who went on to create the awesome Left 4 Dead series and the woefully forgettable Evolve. There's so many reasons as to why deleted scenes is as bad as it is, I just genuinely don't know where to start. For starters, it's probably about as boring and generic as a shooting game could possibly get. They pretty much completely stripped back the different attributes so that all of the weapons from Counter-Strike originally had. You'll still be using the AK-47, the Steyr Org and so forth, but the way they all handle when fired, their recoil, accuracy and so forth has been completely messed with the pseudo more run and gun style approach. Kind of anyway, I mean you can't really be going through it holding down that left mouse button, but it still is a lot more simplistic than it was in 1.6. A game where you could be fully crouched and tapping the fire button and with certain weapons you still wouldn't hit what you had crosshairs on. I think another issue is that the enemy AI is completely brain dead. Now the bot AI for the offline component of Condition Zero was almost like playing against another person. At least in the sense that the AI could navigate the map quite well and complete objectives and show off some degree of self-awareness, checking corners and making sure it didn't get flanked. In deleted scenes though, the AI consists of enemies either standing in one place and shooting at you, which happens 90% of the time, or that other 10% of the time where they're running around, usually just to another position where they'll stand still and shoot at you. Occasionally you'll see the odd enemy with a machete, which makes sense in some of the jungle themed missions, but just seems silly in those set anywhere else. And I think a dozen or so times if not less, I saw an enemy wearing a suicide bomber's vest, though all that guy did was run right up to me and blow himself up, like a total asshole. 
Well, look, I can understand that it's not an exact carbon copy of the way the weapons handle in the online mode, but even if you look at it as its own standalone shooting game, it still kind of sucks. The shooting itself just feels crappy. Enemies often survive multiple headshots. You can hit someone at point blank range with a shotgun and they don't even flinch. Despite enemies often using the same weapons as the player, you've still got to rely on picking up ammo boxes at fixed locations instead. I also think too that most of the weapons are more or less the same in terms of the damage output. A few bullets from a pistol or an assault rifle will do an enemy in, making automatic weapons a far better choice than slower weapons like the sniper rifles or shotguns. On top of all of that shit, the game is also super buggy. I had countless times when the next scripted sequence just didn't occur properly. Nine times out of ten it's when someone's supposed to kick down a nearby door or something, and the only way I could progress through missions was by turning on no clip mode and cheating my way through the locked door. I will say though that one of the things I do kind of find interesting is how you can kind of look at this game almost as if it's Modern Warfare before Modern Warfare even existed. It has this very similar opening to each mission where the screen shows the time and location and it's always hopping from destination to destination for each mission. Putting you into the shoes of another Special Forces type member, be it, you know, the SAS or a Navy SEAL. A lot of the missions similarly also start off with you in some kind of helicopter as you're flying over a forest or a city before you're dropped onto the ground and it all kicks off. Spider team will breach the compound, find and secure the packages, eliminate any opposition, and destroy all drug production equipment. And Condition Zero's also got a lot of scripted sequences. I mean, they may be pretty crappy, but they're still scripted all the same. You're often blowing up something with explosives, rescuing hostages, or maybe taking out a tank with a rocket launcher. I mean, this kind of thing became standard fare with the absolute barrage of Modern Warfare-inspired shooters we'd get over the next decade. Condition Zero ain't the best looking game in the world either. For its time, the Gold Source engine was looking pretty damn old, but one thing that has to be said about the game, and I think one of its biggest strengths, is the mission variety visually. You're always going to be just shooting the same looking one or two enemies over and over, that much is true, but the environments themselves are almost always unique. One mission you're in a rain soaked jungle, then the next you're moving through the streets of Japan before a rooftop in Ireland. This is where I see the ritual entertainment influence in the whole thing, and anyone who's played Sin I think will remember how unique and varied all the levels in that game were as well. Usually visuals don't really matter all that much if the gameplay is solid, and honestly the gameplay is solid for the most part, but you have to consider the period in gaming when this whole thing was released. I mean this is the period when the Cry Engine, the It Tech 4 Engine, and the Source Engine were all unleashed on the world, and for a dated engine from 1998 to still be in operation, just made the whole thing seem even more antiquated. And it wasn't done in an ironic throwback kind of way either, they were just using old technology. There's not really any other way to look at it. It doesn't really matter in the whole grand scheme of things, and like I said, if the gameplay is solid, it often doesn't matter, but my point is that this factor probably didn't help the game's reception. If Condition Zero had have come out in 2001 when it was supposed to, it might have been successful, but the fact that it took another three years before the whole thing saw the light of day, I think was the real nail in the coffin. By that point, Counter-Strike had had three years to get its fan base more addicted, not to mention bringing other players into the fray as well. And if that ain't enough, also consider that in 2004, Valve would also release Counter-Strike Source, which would alienate Condition Zero even more. In fact, I don't think I knew a single person who played Condition Zero for more than a couple of weeks at absolute max. It was the Battleborn and Lawbreakers of its day. People checked it out mostly just out of curiosity, but then went back to 1.6. What is kind of funny though is that Condition Zero actually has more plays at the moment than both Battleborn and Lawbreakers combined. So it might be a bit of a failure, but it's still not either of those games. It ain't all that bad though, I mean if you just want to play Counter-Strike offline against bots, Condition Zero is a pretty superior option, considering it has bot support right out of the box, so to speak, whereas with 1.6 you kind of need to mod it in. The inclusion of the Tour of Duty mode gives the maps a bit of challenge as well, making it more than just winning a certain amount of times, forcing the player to meet certain restrictions to get victory. Once you start playing it on the hard or expert missions, friendly fire is also introduced, which alone means you have to be a lot more aware of your surroundings and where your teammates are. The conditions to win these matches are also a lot trickier too, like finishing a round in 60 seconds or less, or killing three enemies with a specific type of weapon and then also surviving that round, just as an example. And if you want to play Counter-Strike, playing with bots is sadly the only option for a lot of people, depending on where you live in the world. I mean, I'm lucky if I can find a server with a ping below 200. Mostly it's in the high 4s or 5s, because dedicated servers for both Condition Zero and 1.6 are long gone.
When I look back and think about playing Counter-Strike, I'll think about playing Pool Day at what used to be the local land center with my school friends. Or when I used to live with my parents and playing through Italy and Aztec late on a Saturday or Friday night, showing off my custom spray paints to complete strangers. Back during a time when multiplayer shooters were more simplistic and about skill more than just who fired first. I dropped the bomb. Honestly though, I don't think about Condition Zero at all. Its improvements on the original game were so minimal that it hardly warranted all that much attention at the time, and even now, there's less of a reason to play it. I don't think there's ever been a better example in gaming of so many talented people working on something for so long for ultimately something that ended up being such a letdown. And it was a damn shame.